Cyflex gets a significant upgrade in introducing per point attributes in Softimage 2014. I've got a scene here that has a cached cloth simulation, and the cloth simulation I have is on both the pants and on the shirt. And as you can see, we have a nice blending between the belt line and the pants itself where the cloth simulation takes place. We also have a simulation going on with the shirt as well where we've painted up a weight map and used per point attributes to help blend in the stiffness, bend, and some of the shearing. So let's take a look at how this uh, works. I've got a brand new scene that we can start up here. This is a uh, starting scene. And the first thing that I'm going to do is just grab my cloth object, open up an ice tree, and start to build my effect. So we're going to create a simulated ice tree on the pants, and we're going to go right into the Cyflex uh, task, go into the basic category, and pull in a Cyflex cloth node. So you'll notice right away that at the bottom are two new inputs. Uh, one is the ability to crop out the effects of a cloth simulation so they uh, they don't have any effect on those points. Essentially this is just a boolean attribute where you use the is element to, uh, to essentially just mask out the unwanted area. In this case I'll just isolate the selection. Uh, this has the effect of course of speeding up uh, the simulation. So if I wanted to uh, you know, grab a cluster of points and I wanted to quickly mask those off so that they weren't involved just do it pretty roughly here. Just make sure I'm not grabbing too large of an area. And, you know, back here as, as well. And I'll just grab my brush. And just paint that up. So if I built a cluster out of those points, I would pull that cluster uh, into ice and to remove them I would just go and hunt down their is element flag which is a boolean and use that to drive the crop so now those points are no longer um, influenced by the cloth simulation. At the same time I'd want to build a map that includes the areas uh, with any kind of fall off that I, I might desire so for that I would just go and build myself a weight map so I'll get property weight map we'll call this uh, cloth effect and I'll paint it up. Again, what I want to do in this case is to leave out the belt line. And what I'm also going to have to do is use the Cyflex pins to make sure that the areas that are masked out uh, eventually follow the movement of my character. So something like that. And what I'll end up doing is just creating a bit of a a bit of a blend between the two of them. Now these pants, you know, have have some details that I'm going to have to make sure I I include. Otherwise, those points are going to make the effect look kind of strange. So I want to make sure, you know, I'm getting into, you know, like the pockets here, areas like that. That if I'm I'm not careful, um, we'll we'll just get left behind. And I've got the symmetry brush on, so we should be good here. I'll just go in and, and nibble away at these parts some of that out. Okay, uh, again I can see there's a couple little areas uh, in the pockets here that I haven't been able to hit. And I th think that should do it. I, I might be missing a couple points here, but uh, hopefully you get the idea. Okay, so I'm going to pull that map right into my ice tree, so I'll pull in the cloth effect map. Uh, I could freeze the weight map on it, uh, but I, I won't worry about that right now. Of course, in order to drive the map, I'm going to need to access the weights of that map, so I'll double click, explore for the cloth effect map weights, and use it to drive the map. Now, of course, what I could also do, if I wanted to have the effect of my cloth a little bit dampened in some areas, I could grab my uh, cloth, and go in and just take my brush opacity, say down 10% uh, or so, and I'll take the symmetry off. And if there's any areas where I want to, you know, diminish the effect a little bit, I can just kind of remove a little bit of weight just to get a bit more variation to the cloth. And then I can just go back in and blend it all back in. 
get my brush back in here and quickly just re-blend it so you don't get too too drastic of a, a fall off or a sharp of a fall off so that the, the effect falls down. Okay, so that map is uh, working. If I was to plug that in, you'll see now that the The pants just kind of hang there. There's nothing, uh, you know, really going on. That's fine. What we'll do now is we'll bring back the character. Turn that isolation effect off. And I'm just going to unplug this crop map for now. There we go. So his pants are kind of draping here. Um, what I'm going to do is if I look at this point cluster, uh, let's just do that. There we go. And in this case, uh, obviously I want to define a collision for the body, so I'll just go into my collisions and I'll do a collide mesh and I'll use that as a force. mesh, I'll drop that in as a force, and I'll define the body as a collision obstacle. So we've got that. Now the next problem you'll notice is if I hit play, the pants will drape, which is great, they collide with the body, but as soon as the character starts to move, this area here is going to get left behind. In fact, let me just uh, take his shirt off. And you'll notice that as he's walking now, this area is definitely clamped. And we want it to actually follow the movement of the body. So let's go back to our first frame. Let's use a pin constraint. Go to my constraints menu. And just to show you what's happening here, if we go into like the mimic, uh, you can see that all of the constraints utilize the new map input. So uh, I'm going to use a pin, and for that I'm going to need to define uh, a point cluster. Now for this I could always reuse the cluster uh, of the points around the belt line. So I can pin those into place, and I can fade that effect off, that pin effect off, by again using a map. So in this case, I want to paint the map up here, paint the opposite. So I'll paint a second map. Let's go get a weight map. I'll rename this and call it my pin map. And we'll go and start pinning it up. So let's just turn on the symmetry brush. Once again, I, uh, I like to go and isolate my selection for this. Make sure my brush opacity is up at 100%, which it is. And again, I need to make sure that I am touching all the areas along this belt line so none of it gets left behind as you could see in my earlier example. So I, I need to make sure that along the top of the, uh, the jeans that I am incorporating those points. I'll get rid of that. Uh, that looks good there. So just along the top there's a couple, a couple little areas around the belt line that uh, are just a little bit tricky to grab. Got some areas here. And since I have this effect cached, you know, if I miss a, a couple little areas here and there, uh, once I load the final cache in, you'll, you'll actually see the final effect. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Uh, let's get all that there. Get some little areas in here that need painting out. Across the top. And a couple areas right in there. Okay, I think... Uh, I think that'll do it. Uh, it's a bit too much. Let's go to the back. Let's remove that paint. And let's blend it all together. So I'm going to connect the uh, point cluster. Uh, so these are the points that I want to pin. I'll take in the weight map, bring in the pin map, access the weights off of that map, connect them up. And we need an object to pin the points to. So it's kind of using like a, a closest points query. So it's going to take the closest points around the character here 
and pin this area to those points. So we'll grab the body of the character. Uh, in fact, I can just reuse the body here. We'll just take the name and drive it like so. So that's a force for us. So let's go in and connect it up as such. There's our force. There's our maps. And let's see what we have here. I'll hit play. So it should just take a couple seconds to get started. There we go. And it, it is a little bit slow. I don't have the fastest of laptops right now, and um, it's kind of uh, on its on its last legs after a, a couple of the last projects I've done. Okay, so we're not getting the effect we want right here. So let's go back into our ice tree and figure out uh, exactly what is going on. So we've got the pin. I'm using the object as the pin. Everything looks like it should be good. Let's just remove this cropping effect. The pin should take care of that. Again, we'll let it simulate up. It'll just take a couple seconds to do so on my laptop. And let's see what happens once the character starts moving now. And this should be fine. Now the problem that I was having was that the pin map was removing the effect of those points entirely from the pins as well. So when you are using, so you can see that it is working uh, just fine here now. There are a couple of issues. You can see, like I, I mentioned, I am uh, I haven't painted everything properly. I'm likely missing a couple of points here or there. So I can always just come back into my weight maps. Bring it back to the first frame and uh, blend it in. So that tends to be the problem right around here. Let's kind of just take some of that effect off. What I should be doing as well is obviously uh, blending it down using the the blending brush. So I'm just going to take the influence off of the belt line, drop my points back in here, and let's use our smoothing now. Make my brush a little bit larger. Just kind of blend that area out. There we go. Actually, I should probably remove this area here. Let's re blend it back. And let's see what our result is this time. So again, let's set this to play. And this time we should have a bit of a smoother effect. So what I'm doing here, the reason of course is just I'm doing a run up so that the cloth can drape properly and then the character starts moving. There we go. So that's basically the cloth simulation. What I'm going to do in this case is uh, just load in the point cache of what I had before. So let's go into the cache manager. Let's read a cache onto our object. I'll go and grab my example. Two hundred and twenty frame cache. Let's just apply that and get rid of the Cyflex. And again, you can see here that after you've taken a little bit of time to work out the effect, it actually looks pretty decent.
So there you have it, uh, Cyflex on Ice for version 2014 now includes per point attributes.